Sometimes, as crazy as this is going to sound, ships do get abandoned. Who would just dump something as big and pricey as a whole massive ship? But it does happen, so frequently in fact, that we've managed to make two whole videos about it. Now there are going to be many different kinds of abandoned stories here, so don't think this is only going to be one kind of thing happening to various ships. A great example of this is that of the Costa Concordia. This was a cruise ship that was very high end, so much so that it was sailing around an island in Italy in 2012, when all of a sudden it crashed on the shore because it was in waters that were too shallow for it. This was no mere sudden stop though. 32 people were killed by this action, and that raised a very important question of why in the world did it happen to begin with? Think about it like this though. Cruise ships are meant to be luxury vessels in which those on board, in terms of passengers, have to worry for nothing. As such, they'd have tested the boat thoroughly and hired an incredibly competent crew and captain. Going ashore like that and thus killing people is not really what's supposed to happen. In court, the prosecutors of the case came up with some rather unique theories as to what occurred, including an explanation that the captain had gotten close to the shore in order to, and I'm not kidding here, impress a woman that he was having an affair with. Now can I just say how dumb that is? He has a freaking ship. That's impressive enough. The captain, multiple members of the crew, and one executive from the boat's own company were found guilty because it was indeed an act of human error that caused the ship to crash and be abandoned. The SS Orang Medan now, if you're hoping for more of a ghost story with some of these ship tales, we've got you covered, such as the SS Orang Medan, because this indeed is a tale of a ghost ship. While no one can truly agree on when these particular events took place, it's said to have happened around the 1940s. According to the story, the SS Orang Medan, a Dutch vessel, was passing through the Strait of Malacca when it ran afoul of a mysterious tragedy. Nearby ships reported receiving a horrifying distress call, quote, all officers including Captain Dead, lying in chart room and on bridge, probably whole crew dead, end quote. Then there was an unintelligible frenzy of Morse code, and the radio operator had the final word of, I die. That's pretty creepy. Eventually another vessel did indeed find the ship, and true to the messages, the ship was littered with corpses. There wasn't a single living person on board, and the poses and positions of the bodies, and especially their faces, told a very dark story indeed. But why is that? Well, that's because there was no rhyme or reason for them to all have died, there were no physical injuries on the bodies, and yet everyone had perished. But wait, there's more. Because after the ship would be found and brought into port, it then caught fire, to the extent that the ship had to be evacuated and later exploded and sank into the deep. What really happened on that ship? Well, unfortunately, nobody will ever know. SS America now here's another take on the whole abandoned ship thing that you might not expect, because the SS America was a ship that was made in 1939 and was able to serve as a motley of ship types and ship names for over 50 years before rather mysteriously running aground in an atypical manner. So what exactly happened? Well, for that, we'll have to go to 1994. By this point in time, the ship had become more of an antique than a viable vessel for certain jobs, and as such, it was bought with the goal of being a five-star hotel after some retrofitting. The problem, though, was that the journey to get to its final resting place was anything but simple. They had to take the long way around due to it not being able to go through the Suez Canal, and then it had to be towed because of weather issues that held it back. Fast forward to January of 1994, and the ship, now dubbed the American Star, was being towed by another boat through massive tow lines that snapped during a storm that they faced in the Atlantic. 
The crew was thankfully rescued, but the ship went aground at Playa de Garce off the west coast of the Canary Islands. Just as bad though, while a whole bunch of people decided to take their sweet time in getting everything in order, nature began to take its toll on the ship and became a tourist attraction that people would sometimes zip line to see. Eventually, the ship would break in half, with part of it sinking and the rest of it becoming deteriorated over time. The Mary Celeste Arguably one of the most famous ghost ship stories ever is that of the Mary Celeste, a ship that we honestly don't really know what happened to and aren't likely to ever find out the whole story. The ship's final tale began in 1872. The vessel was set to go from New York City to Italy on a long voyage, but one that had been done before. However, despite setting sail on November 7th, it never reached its destination and instead would be discovered on December 5th about 400 miles east of the Azores by another vessel one that had set sail after the Mary Celeste had departed from New York. And that right there is only the beginning of the story, because when the crew that found the Mary Celeste boarded her, there was no one on board to be found, not a single person. The ship was still afloat despite some water being in the bottom, and the only lifeboat on the ship was gone. Just as important, there were rations within the ship that would have lasted the crew for up to six months, and yet it was all still there, untouched. There are a lot of mysteries with this abandoned vessel that have never been solved, like why did the crew leave the ship in the state that it was in? Why did they not leave a note to where they may have gone? What happened to the singular lifeboat that people presumably took? Nobody knows for sure. However, there was an investigation, but it was found that no foul play had occurred on board. The SS Airfield Here's another on my list of unique abandoned vessels because I'm talking about the SS Airfield. It's a ship that you'll find still floating in Australia in Homebush Bay. The problem, if you want to call it that, is that you'll find that it's not so much a ship anymore as it is a floating forest, because there are trees and plants of all sorts, including lush greenery that's quite literally growing out of the ship. Originally launched as the SS Coromal, the massive 1,140-ton steel beast was built in 1911 in the UK and then registered in Sydney in 1912 as a steamship which was later used to transport supplies to American troops that were stationed in the Pacific regions during World War II. It served its duty well, and eventually in 1972 it was sent to Australia to be retired and then broken down. Even being put in Homebush Bay, which was a ship-breaking yard, but they never got around to it, and a few other ships. And so that's when nature took its course, and the results are there for all to see. Now while it may not be mysterious in the traditional sense, it should be noted that this isn't something that you see every day, and for good reason. But it's also proof of the true power of nature, because it pushed through metal and other objects in order to make this floating forest. And you really can't deny, it's actually kind of cool looking. The Carol A. Deering Are you ready for another ghost ship tale? Well good, because I've got another doozy for you that's never been fully explained. The Carol A. Deering was a ship that went upon its final voyage in August of 1920, and five months later, everything went wrong. But before then, it would set sail from Norfolk, Virginia, in tip-top shape with an experienced captain and a crew of 10 men that were bound for Rio de Janeiro with a cargo of coal. There were a few issues along the way, which included the captain getting sick and having to be replaced, but the ship made it there, dropped off its cargo, and then began to sail back with an ETA of December of that year. Enter Captain Jacobson aboard the Cape Lookout Lightship in North Carolina, because in 1921 he spotted the ship and was able to get a message from it that stated that they had lost their anchors. As he looked upon the ship, he noticed that the crew were milling around, something that wouldn't be happening if the ship was in serious danger, and two days later the ship ran aground on the Diamond Shoals. When the ship was inspected, the crew was gone as were their personal items, certain ship equipment, important documents, and of course, all of the lifeboats. The FBI even investigated what happened on the ship, 
but could find no answers. The crew simply vanished, the ship crashed, and the mystery endures. North Korean Ghost Ships now there are four words that you'll likely never want to hear again, because North Korea isn't exactly the best place in the world, it's actually pretty terrible there. And their leaders have been more than happy to cause panic by upping their arsenal, so them having ghost ships, that's just adding to the madness. But to be fair, these aren't weaponized ships, at least not yet, that North Korea is using. Rather, it's something that happens every year in Japan? Well, every year in the country, a series of fishing vessels from North Korea mysteriously wash up on the shores of Japan. And when they're inspected, the crew are dead and the vessels are very much worse for wear. So what exactly is happening with these vessels? Well, North Korean fishing vessels go out during the winter seasons to get certain kinds of catch. But the problem is that not only are the conditions not good to go fishing in, the boats aren't exactly modern either. They don't have powerful engines, GPS, or other modern amenities that many would need to navigate the waters of today. And as a result, many of these fishing vessels get trashed and their crew die out of starvation and exposure. As for how they end up in Japan every year, the winter winds push them towards the land of the rising sun. Still though, it does make you kind of wonder how so many of these vessels end up this way every year with no one trying to break the streak. But then again, if you look at their leader, you may find a clear answer. Wooden Ship Underground now, if you were to go and dig up the ground around your house or on the land of a once famous building, you'd likely find little things that remain from years or even decades previous. But one thing that you probably wouldn't expect to find is a full-on ship under the former World Trade Center. This is a very true story of what happened when construction began on one World Trade Center after the events of 9-11. As they were digging down to ensure the foundation was good enough for the new building, they then found a wooden ship. The ship in question was built using timber that had been harvested from old growth forests in southern Pennsylvania around the year 1773. So how did it get stuck under a building that was built a long time after its own construction? Well, it's believed that a few decades after being built, it was left at a port. This port then became a landfill as land expansion, in the human sense, was being conducted for New York. As a result, it was just kind of left there, and eventually the World Trade Center was built on top of it. It's incredibly weird and awfully strange, and yet it's honestly kind of cool because it's a piece of history that was found before remaking history to right a wrong. In other words, it's a true American story. USS Finnekite now who's ready for an atypical ghost ship story? Well too bad if you're not because I'm doing it anyways. This is the story of a vessel known as the USS Fenekite, and while it may have a weird name, it also has a weird history from start to finish. For example, its first role in life was that of a yacht. Then it was purchased by the US Navy and turned into a vessel that they used in both World War I and II, and that's not exactly what you would expect from a yacht. Furthermore, it underwent various names and transformations during its time, which included being used by Thomas Edison himself, all in order to try and figure out certain countermeasures to fight off German U-boats. Eventually though, after many years of service, it would be bought by a man named Robert Miller, who then took it for a low price, at least back in those days, and rebuilt it into a yacht. He apparently did that in 10 days, which isn't so bad. He did a few trips with it and then docked it in Taylor Creek near a property that he owned. However, here's the twist. He then left it there because he didn't want to spend any more money to fix it up further. That's right, he turned it back into a yacht and left it to rot. Don't you love how I rhyme? Nature took its course, it became a tourist attraction known as the Ghost Ship, and thus we have an atypical ghost ship story. The Octavius 
Now, if you want a traditional ghost ship story, I'll tell you about the Octavius. This one begins in London in 1761, and at the time, the Octavius was meant to take cargo from there to China, a harrowing journey in those days. However, the ship was stocked with provisions, a large crew, and so it could make its adventure work. Sure enough, though, they made it to China safe and sound, unloaded the cargo, and then began their journey home. Not liking the unusually warm weather, the captain then decided to take a different path home and go through the Northwest Passage. While that's something that many can do now, back then no one had ever made it through. And sure enough, no one ever saw the Octavius again. Until 1775, when a whaling ship of all things found it floating around in the waters that they were in. But where exactly were they? Well, Greenland. As they boarded the ship, they found the entire 28-person crew frozen to death. That included the captain, who died at his desk with his pen in hand. Now I'll ask the obvious question, how did they go from China to Greenland with no one noticing them for over a decade? And what happened to them that led them to freezing to death? No one is ever likely to know. Northumberland Strait Ghost Ship The Northumberland Strait is a body of water that separates Prince Edward Island from Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in eastern Canada. On those waters, it's said to be a ghost ship unlike any that I've talked about before. But why? Well, because it does sail on the waters like other ghost ships, but it's one that has its sails ablaze as it goes around. And that's a very striking visual, wouldn't you say? This isn't just a recent tale either. It's one that those near the strait have told for nearly 200 years. Apparently, the vessel was once a very beautiful ship until eventually it became something that was engulfed in flames as people watched it go down in the water. The funny thing is that the ship has been seen by multiple people over the years, to the point that a rescue operation was done at one point in time to try and save the crew that many people thought they saw on the ship, but just as they were getting close, it vanished. 19th Century Shipwreck Sometimes abandoned ships are found by accident. Given the size of the oceans, it's not necessarily a surprise. For example, not too long ago in 2019, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, was going to do some very special testing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico via underwater drones when they suddenly found themselves looking at a shipwreck from the 19th century. Needless to say, they stopped what they were doing and made quick moves to check it out. The shipwreck required a swift change in operations, which illustrated the power of telepresence technology, and after a flurry of phone calls and emails to marine archaeologists around the country, experts then tuned in to live video from the seafloor and lent their expertise as they virtually joined the dive. It would be a 100-plus foot vessel that had a nice composition materials-wise, and it further showed that we need to explore the oceans, else miss some other important findings. The Bessie A. White the Bessie A. White was a four-masted coal schooner, probably one of the last ever built, and was more than 200 feet long with a displacement of 2,000 tons. It's yet another ship that had a tragic ending, which for it was no doubt even more sad due to how it was only three years old at the time that things went wrong. On February 6th of 1922, she would run aground a half mile west of Smith's Point. Not surprisingly, the impact led her to starting to fill up with water at a rapid pace. Thankfully though for the crew, they were all alive. The problem though was that they couldn't find a place to get rescued. Their signals for help were going unnoticed due to various conditions around them, and it was unclear on how they would ever make it out. They were able to launch two lifeboats, one of them made it to the shore and was able to get help. The rest of the crew would be able to survive, and the wreckage of the ship has lasted for decades. SS Mahano. Now sometimes 
An abandoned ship is doomed by things it can't possibly control, you know, like Mother Nature. Because when the SS Maheno was made, it was made to be an ocean liner to help carry people and materials from New Zealand to Australia, and it did very well for over 30 years. However, at the end of its life in 1935, it was being towed to Japan in order to be broken down for parts, and all would be going well, that was until the Maheno and its two two ships went and found themselves inside of a cyclone. That's not a whole lot of fun. The tow line broke and the Maheno went adrift. The problem here was manyfold, but the biggest was that there was a skeleton crew on the Maheno and they were now on a ship that couldn't be stopped. They eventually ran aground off Fraser Island and the crew was fine and had camped out on the island just waiting to be rescued. The ship was stripped for parts after it couldn't be fixed or sold. MV Luyabov. Now, if you ever get something that was just fraught with problems from the get-go and nothing that you did ever made it worth the effort that you put into it, getting it in the first place, well, for the people who made this ship, it was that kind of deal. This vessel was supposed to be one that could not only survive massive ice packs, because it was made for the Soviet Union, but also it was to be a ship that could travel the oceans. The problem, though, was that this glittering ocean liner never lived up to its full potential, and as a result became a ghost ship with numerous hauntings on it. It was built in 1975, and a few decades later in 2006, it ran aground and bad things just kept on happening. Including it being seized due to unpaid debts, rotting in a Canadian dock, becoming a floating derelict on a journey to its new home, and then it got separated from not one, but two towboats. It also became infested with cannibal rats, and is apparently still adrift out there somewhere. The SS Oregon Now would you like another bad luck ship story? Well good, because I have one in the form of the SS Oregon. This was a ship that at one time was the fastest ocean liner in the Atlantic, which meant that it was something that was both fast and reliable. But then the worst possible thing happened when it collided with another ship, one that was never fully identified. Regardless, the captain and crew had a problem. They were struck and water was pouring in. The crew then attempted to try and stop the hole, but it was not enough. So the captain ordered the vessel to be abandoned. Thankfully for all the passengers aboard, another ship was able to assist them, as the SS Oregon didn't have enough lifeboats for everyone. So thus, nobody lost their lives in the event. Today, the wreck is a popular dive site in Long Island Sound, and some of its bigger parts, like its engine, can still be seen. MV Captianus What's that? A third ship that got wrecked because things outside of their control? That's not surprising, honestly. This time we head to the Greek vessel in the MV Captianus. This was in 1974, and the ship had docked with anchors lowered off the port near Greenock. A massive storm had begun, and while they were anchored, it was strong enough to blow them into the anchored line of another vessel. The ships didn't collide, but the anchor for the MV Captianus snapped off. Fearing that the drifting added with the storm could sink the vessel, the captain then decided to ground the ship to ensure the safety of his crew. It worked, for a while, until the morning came and the ship rotated onto its side. That's where it remains to this day, minus all the parts that have been stolen from it, of course. La Famille Express Another Russian vessel to have met its end under odd circumstances was that of the La Famille Express, a Soviet Union ship that began life as an oil rig service ship, then transferring supplies to remote offshore oil wells. The name La Famille Express came in 1999 after it was bought by Panama. Now, the problem was that the ship at this time in its life wasn't exactly the greatest. In fact, it was old, and the materials that it was transporting were just too much for it to handle. 
The Lafa Mill Express became firmly planted in the shallow waters off the Caicos Banks during Hurricane Francis in 2004. Under high winds, the unmanned vessel had actually dragged its anchor from the South Dock area to a distance of almost 12 miles, showing once again that you can't beat Mother Nature, you can only hope to survive her. Edward Bolin Shipwreck at this point, you may be thinking, what other kinds of shipwrecks are there out there that are mysterious? Well, how about one that's found in the desert of Africa? That's right, the Edward Bolin shipwreck has been found in a desolate desert in Namibia, of all places. But how does a ship from the ocean end up in the middle of a desert? Well, it's actually pretty simple, and it comes down to both timing and placement. You see, when the ship was wrecked, it wasn't a desert. Not fully, anyways. Rather, it was on the coastline where it was known for heavy fog, and as a result, it ran aground a good distance and then got stuck there. Fast forward to a hundred years or so, and you have the desert gaining more purchase and drying out the coastline until it looks like the ship is honestly just in the middle of the desert. The place is actually known as a graveyard of ships, but this is one that really sets the tone. Demetrios Finally, we have the Demetrios, a ship that was built in Denmark in 1950 and was small but could do its job well enough, even if that job wasn't exactly legal. There were many rumors about the ship's origins and how it got stranded on the beach. Most relate that the ship was used to smuggle cigarettes between Turkey and Italy, a job that a small ship like it could get done easily without drawing any kind of attention. The rumors go that after being seized by a certain country, the ship was then set ablaze in order to hide any evidence of their wrongdoing. However, there's another belief that the ship was actually abandoned and sunk due to weather conditions, drifting it out into the local waters multiple times. Eventually, it would end up on the beach, known as Maltaki in 1981, and regardless of what put her there, she is there, and that's where she remains. What did you think of these stories about ships and other naval vessels that disappeared or were abandoned without any clear reason as to why? Do you think there are some explanations for these and that I've just not found them yet? Do you know of another ship that was abandoned mysteriously? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.